Hello there, Fellowship of the Rye, Harvey here. I'm not sure how much of me you can see. I'm finishing a bowl of um, um, Seven Seas Gold. Oh, what happened in there? Just one second. Okay. This is long overdue. And I guess it's gonna be kind of a big response to mm, Tobacco Frank, if I'm not mistaken, and Ken Charbrier. What about lighters? Mm, these are the lighters that I currently own. I think I have a couple more, like the emergency one in the um, in my tobacco pouch mm, and I think I have to do a re-review of what I did um, months ago so these four lighters work on on and I'm missing one of the tamper here that I give them all away and they're pretty good I have to buy another one uh, so these all work with butane which is a compressed fuel and, and you just stick it down the bottom and then you fill it out and these three work with the simple fluid or some kind of liquid naphtha fluid um, both have each um, fuel its advantages and its problems I heard um, that I heard I haven't tested that altitude might actually affect simple lighters but I, I haven't try it I just heard I know or have experienced that temperature affect affects um, mm, butane lighters because in winter they're harder to it's more difficult to light it up with these with the butane ones but as a matter of performance they're all very cheap lighters I, I never have invested more than 20 bucks in a lighter the most expensive one is of course the SIPO and, and I haven't bought my first SIPO lighter. This this came well you could argue that I bought it because this came with a Peterson set and in my tobacco pouch I have the one that Mike gave me. This is the permanent match that I'm gonna just give a tip to Ken. This is a pretty neat thing because um is is the same system of the flint right right here. Um but it's not windproof like the Zippo is. This is a knockoff on an all boy that you open and then you strike the flint and then you have there. Uh, this is a torch and a soft flame at the same time. If you keep it on, it's a torch and it will change color. And if you leave it on, you will just get the soft flame. Uh, this is a pipe tool and butane lighter and it works with um, that's, that's the problem with these lighters they they work fine for a while and then I, I, I just have a whole different level of appreciation for the flint kind of lighters even if it's butane I think this system is just wonderful and the spark it's not reliable enough for me and this is a double then you have the torch here and then you have the cell flame here and and the problem with this lighter is uh, this one is the first uh, pipe lighter that I had and it worked like a wonder and I think the same problem that you had there Frank um, somehow it's hit and miss uh, the first one that I got was just plain amazing I bought this one for the for the cigar punch but um, I ended up not liking cigars and and the lighter itself is is not that good the first one that I got was really good but this one is not so my actually my my two three favors will be these three <laughs> 
and for different reasons. Um, this one is because of its butane and it's it's a reliable butane lighter. It's really cheap. I think it, I pay like like five dollars for this. Uh, this one because when you're reaching the end of a bowl of a large bowl like a Mario Grandi, right? If you're reaching this one. Uh, this one, or perhaps even this one, will will have a little bit of a trouble just reaching down the bowl, right? And for this this one, it, it makes a hell of a job. And then I think I have to give the trick of how to use this one. This one is the first one that I got. I, I bought a couple more, and I had it there ready, and I actually ended up sending them away. But uh, can share that um, for him to this to work it has to be like dripping of fuel and, and I disagree I think that's quite dangerous the problem is that since we call it permanent match we are mistakenly think that it, it behaves similar to a match it behaves similar in the design but it's not entirely the same thing let me explain you why when you strike here it's enough to have the smaller the contact so the two materials will spark and then you will have the flame in this action you have to create the spark between the flint which is in the top a little bit of cotton was there and and the wick that has the fuel and then the spark in the flint against this will ignite the fuel in the wick uh, but it doesn't have to be dripping of fuel it, it has to be Mm. Actually, even when I when I overfill it, I just shake it down and just um, remove the excess of fuel. What you gotta do is you have to have all this area, right? You have all this area for the spark, and what you gotta do is actually use use it flat, not not like this, but flat. So maximizing the surface the contact surface between both the flint and this and this thing i don't know how you call this thing and it's, it's not enough to have it just a little bit it has to be a strong and constant movement along the whole thing so it will spark all the time if you try just to do it a little bit well sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't but for having a reliable flame, I will say like just from the top and, and do it with some energy. And and it work and it work like a charm. It's also important not to have too much wick out or we'll just burn it out a little bit and to, to have enough flint there. I I use these these two all the time. Uh, I have no problems with the sepal flavor and for people who have that issue I will highly recommend uh, a system like this. Extremely reliable. Okay, I think that's all for me. Um, as always my friends, off away.